We got top 10 skills we decided that should belong in people's arsenals, right? Yeah, should I use like a douchebag voice? No. Welcome to the top no, 10. No. <laughs> Today no. on Watch Mojo, <laughs> we're gonna put it in my butt. <laughs> okay, so, so I'm gonna start at the bottom and we're just gonna work our way to the top because I feel okay. like that's appropriate. So, we'll do what? Should I guess start with 10? Number 10? Or yes. is this in any particular order? Should we put this in an order? No, 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 10, 10, 10. Just 10 skills. Oh, God, I didn't, I, I definitely didn't put them in order. Please don't make me order no, no, how no, good no, the 10 no, skills no, 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 Okay, so we'll just, I'll just, uh, I'll just start from the bottom and go up to the top. Okay, so, since we're not numbering them, mm -hmm. or, well, maybe we should number them, but not in, like, they're not in a particular order. Like, they're, mm -hmm. like, the number doesn't mean anything. <laughs> Ah, fuck it. Nice. Fuck it. We'll just list. We'll name ten of them. That's it. Okay. No number. Okay. Okay, so Tiger's tiger Strength. Why is it okay. in our list? So, whenever you, you, like, first get into the game, the stat buff skills look really cool because they um, just impact the game so much, but um, eventually you find out that people like to pack <laughs> things that make your life really bad. <laughs> <laughs> yes. If you've ever been at negative six speed, negative six honing, <laughs> and you can't play anymore. Yes. And tiger strength is just the ability to get two damage for two mana in a way that won't screw you. And it lasts 15 seconds, which is actually an eternity. Yes. Um, I think the low cost helps. I mean, it takes up a slot in your hand, but... Like, a, uh, that's a five damage flame sword. Or, you know, just something crazy. Like, anything tiny turns into something that's, like, mid-tier now in damage. Yeah, and it... Just pushing it allows a lot of skills to get over a lot of shields that would stop them otherwise. Yeah. <clears throat> Memory lapse. <laughs> I mean... Hold on. What... <laughs> What Go do we what? like? Does it even need to be said? The moment oh. this skill hits the floor, everyone is just heading to your base or wherever the hell you put it. Yeah, a really good way to uh, th listen. Phantom Dust is in a revival right now where people are playing again, but even in a revival, a really cool way for people to get upset at you and maybe kick you is for you to hang memory laps, you know? <laughs> um, yes. Uh, it's, most decks can't, you just, it just turns off everything, because if you look at all of your skills, so few retain. Your shields are gone, your attacks are gone, it's, you'll deck out. And I don't even know, like, I can't even think of, does Memory Lapse even work on, like, Reincarnation? Like, does it, does it work have... on... As long as you have the aura. As long as you have the four aura, you'll be okay. It'll it'll retain. Okay. But uh, my favorite way I've heard it put is a lot of decks, if their attacks disappear in one hit, don't have 20 damage. <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> I can't kill anyone. Yeah, I mean, it, it compared to all the other environmentals, it's the only one that we saw that just made too much of an impact. Because yeah. I feel like there there's a way to get around a, a bunch of these, but this is the one where like I'd say most arsenals are not built for at all. No, it that stops it cold, but it's okay. It doesn't get run very often in um in free for alls because you usually die after you put it on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you put it down. You have three people in your base, and they're all just trying to get rid of it. <laughs> yeah. Or they're like, let's kill this guy <laughs> after we get rid of it. Dash. It's, uh, I'm always confused why I don't see Dash more. It's, I think it's because shields are so strong in this game and you have things like Flash Hole, lo uh, lots of stuff 
that deletes other skills when you get hit. But if I had to pick any shield skill that all I wanted to do was block, I would pick dash instead. It's just so hard to hit someone with it, and it costs so little mana. And the only... Th I think there's only two skills in the game that can actually deal with it, or at least hard counter, and that's Turbulence, and that's like the hard, hard counter. And then you have uh, Wind Pressure, which is the projectile version of it, mm. which yeah. is still single use, but you have to land a hit, so it's not as reliable. Turbulence is like the end-all, be-all, and in the, the, both of those skills are in, they're both in nature. So I don't see why you would run wind pressure over turbulence. Like it doesn't, to me, it doesn't make any sense. But, um, and it's because turbulence is ever the entire map. Wind pressure is only the one target. Yeah, and you're not likely to run into it because, like, who runs turbulence? Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's really uh, specific. I mean, if if you're dealing with a lot of erase stuff or anything like even tiger strength or anything like that turbulence can really shut down stuff like that but i would say you don't see it too often and it's a it's only a five cost skill so like you could I throw in a turbulence just to cover just to cover those bases and then be done with it that's fair yeah that's true uh, i i think if you slap dash on a jumper um, yes, <laughs> it gains a lot of value because you can you navigate the map so quickly, uh, like hopping over ledges and moving into position. It's I don't know. I think it's underrated. I think I sh wish I saw it in more decks because key is already a great school, and I think it should be run more. Agreed. I'm I'm a little afraid though. The more people that run dash, the more people are going to have to run turbulence. <laughs> Turbulence are, I guess there, there are a couple skills that can hit it, like that home, a couple yeah. of race skills will chase it, but yeah. but even still, there's not a good way to get rid of it, because it's yellow. Yeah. Here, yeah, the next one. Oh, here it goes. Dragon Slayer. Dragon Slayer... In a world where I think shields are generally... If you just compared pound to pound, like shield, shielding to damage, damage, shields generally win. Yeah. And in a game like that, Dragon Slayer is kind of ridiculous. It... You can't dodge it unless you're standing behind something. Yeah. Or in position to, like, jump off a ledge. And if you aren't playing a jumper and it hits you and it erases your shield you get comboed because yep. it's only two mana exactly <laughs> it's um if i just wanted an erase skill i'd slap in any deck and be like the deck's better now i'd take <laughs> this skill yes and compared to the other penetrates defensive skills uh tiger prevails is a short range skill so like by just by just having it be a short range skill tiger prevails is is already like infinitely worse because it's so easy to dodge and it's seven i didn't even realize the skill was in the game i'm <laughs> looking at it <laughs> so, it's seven it it's shorter range super easy to dodge and like good luck trying to combo at seven <laughs> yeah no i don't know what you'd even do with that i think the 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 extra benefit of like Dragon Slayer is that because like you were saying defensive skills are so prominent like they're so important in the game that compared to other penetrate defensive skills you have Tiger Prevails which only erases attack skills and it's one of just one of them so like by default you don't even get to con like control which attack skill it is not that yeah. you'd be able to control the defense skill it is anyways but it's better to erase any defensive skill in general than an attack skill. Maybe uh, this is over like over analyzing, but most of the time when people run at you, they don't have more than one defense skill equipped, like on their four. People don't usually run at you with two shields. Sometimes they do, but... So you Dragon Slayer someone, and they're now screwed until they yeah. go back to their deck. Yeah. <clears throat> 
but if, yeah, dragon having like like you said, having dragon slayer in a like if you just if you have a, a arsenal that already has key in it, might as well just slap dragon slayer in it because all you're doing is benefiting yourself. There's no reason not to run it. <laughs> yeah, it's very good. Uh, return to nature. Oh, return to nature. Um. Well, let's let's talk about specifically why return to nature over some of the other like status resetting attributes kind of skill because like the other ones that exist are like armros um uh angel tears uh, nu no, neutralization, refresh, mm -hmm. purify. I think w the one, I th to me anyways, I think the reason why we chose Return to Nature is because it also deals with environmental effects. Like if there's somebody that decides that they want to hang something, like hang a, a really bad skill like Memory Lapse or something, then Return to Nature handles that it handles any status effect that gets out of control and you it'll allow you to put uh it'll allow you to have in your arsenal some sort of status boosting element without having to commit to like like an armorless watch or something that could really screw you over like you could have like one or two extra damage but somebody could have like plus four and you're like well I don't want to deal with that or the environmental. Just get rid of everything. And let's yeah. just return back to neutral. It's like a one skill tech. You know, like it just takes care of everything. You can throw it in and you don't lose to a lot of stuff now. Just just, just with one. It's a yeah. safe coverage. Uh -uh. It's really that extra environmental effect cancel that brings it over. I agree with that. Because I'm not seeing... There aren't a lot of skills that get rid of environmentals in the first place. Does I don't even I think is that the only one? I'm uh, there's to look right now. Starting point in the same tree, which why wouldn't you run Return to Nature instead? Oh um, yeah, I didn't even realize that. Yeah, it's right next to it. Erases environmental. Yep. There might be one more I'm not thinking of, but a uh, crush. That's it. Yep. Uh, no but good. starting point single use crushes infinite use but like I guess I guess the only benefit maybe is that like with something like crush or starting like I don't really see I mean, starting points of one crush is a three the only thing I could see of is like if somebody has multiple of like an environmental then it's like well if you know you're going against an environmental heavy arsenal then maybe crush might be better because you're using one skill for erasing multiple environmentals as opposed to return to nature which is single use then you'll have to have three in your deck i don't know i mean i still think the status effect resetting everybody's back to neutral and then canceling the environmental effect probably is still better but i think it edges just slightly over some of the ones that just either a just swap the statuses or just get rid of the environmentals this one does both and it doesn't cost it only costs three or so it's like you can use it pretty early on in the game to get rid of some of those super early game environmentals yeah i'd, I'd recommend it then yeah over most stuff or even just, you know, one one way to deal with status in your deck. Something like that. Yeah. But this one above the others. A glacial wall. I feel like everyone, when they're first playing Phantom Dust, runs into this skill. Because... They're like, what you, do I do? <laughs> <laughs> when you're first playing, you, like, mess with swords. And swords are great, but glacial walls are three. And... It freezes buttons for... An absurd amount of time. Yeah. Like, 10 seconds is forever. Um, yes. It gets popped by a lot, but 
Usually, you can throw a glacial wall in your deck, and it's like... You just get reprieve. It, it stops a lot of dumb, um, and it helps deal with a skill we'll get into later. Uh, but a very prominent attack skill, it stops people from throwing it at you because it has three defense. It just it just stops a lot of annoying things from happening. Yeah, it stops a lot of early game, like, three damage skills. And it's the fact that it's a barrier and not an absorb makes it even better because it can deal with swords. Like, it can deal with uh, flame sword, it can deal with psycho knife. Um, pretty easily, and 10 seconds is way too long. <laughs> and then the person's just stuck in your base running around like, well, I guess my buttons are frozen. I'll go back to my base then. <laughs> yeah, and even if it gets popped, I'm okay with that. I'm fine with trading a glacial wall for 10 seconds of freeze most of the time. Yeah, it may allow you to set up a combo. Like, eat, like I didn't even think of that. Like, you could, f like, force somebody to break your glacial wall and then get an unblockable situation going with like a pressure or something like that because they can't do yeah. anything and then you have your combo set up that's yeah that's incredible um okay so here's the one that's it was too hard to pick one so we are kind of cheating and we grouped a bunch of them together but it's any low-cost defensive skill that erases short-ranged attacks. So, example being like Iron Skin, Wall of Current, Angel's Wing, Devil's Arm. I think those are, I think those are all of them. Hmm. Yeah, they're, they're. I don't really know how to put this exactly. They're so good. I, there's a lot of stuff in the game that we were just talking about. Glacial Wall, and whenever you get run down by swords, by hyper kick, by what else? There's other melee skills. Like, I don't know, high speed punch if you're fighting against like some weird key deck. Um, it just deals with them very easily. And most of the time, when people make decks, if they m put melee skills in them, they don't run very many. So even in the case where your shield gets overrun by an Excalibur or something like that, you're still removing that tool from their arsenal for a very low cost. Yes. Yep. <clears throat> by deleting it and trading. I think the other one we the one the other one we didn't include on here, and I think it has something to do with it because it, it's it's the automatic activation one is guard of water um oh yeah it's a two cost five defense one but i think the problem with that is is you want to if you get hit with a projectile that you're not aware of and they see guard of water activate well then they know for a fact that you're gonna have guard of water and they can just like stun you or, like you have no control over it. I think that's maybe the problem with it. It's still a low cost, erases any short range skill defense, but the fact that it automatically procs, maybe not the best, because oh. you you can't bait with it. Oh, I just looked at it. It's also one use. <laughs> oh, that's definitely yeah. That's uh, <laughs> that's probably a much better reason to not have it in your arsenal. <laughs> Never mind then. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I was wondering why I've never seen it. Yeah, that'd be why. Yeah, well, that's... There you go. Um, the other ones are... That are, like, erases any... Sh that, like, attack skill that it blocks. Like, uh, like vacuum wall. Um, that's 6-4. It's too much. It's a barrier. You can still get rid of projectiles with it, but it's not... I don't know. I think it costs too much for what it does. Um... And you need something to deal with the early game swords, like flame sword, psycho knife, anything of that nature. The yeah, hyper kick and any of those garbage things. There's too many efficient shields to run the ones that are really inefficient. The mana to shield is generally like really high. So yeah. six four is pretty bad. And I think uh I think what is it? Uh 
devil's arm, I think. Uh, devil's arm is the one that costs... Zero, right? It costs one health? Is that the one I'm thinking of? Yes. Yeah, yeah. It costs zero. Four strength. It raises any short range skill it blocks with the penalty of one health. It's a really good shield, but I think the 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 health cost may not be worth it for some people. But, you know, that that's entirely up to them. But that's why we decided to put Iron Skin, Wall of Current, uh, Angel's Wing, and Devil's Arm all in the same category because they all suit that very low cost, erase a short range skill. Yes. And most of them still protect you from an attack skill we'll talk about later. <laughs> or maybe have talked about. The next defense skill, Flash Hole. It's... It's good. <laughs> the longer this game's out, the more you'll see it. You'll, you'll know the sound effect, you'll know exactly what it looks like, and you'll expect it to happen to you. Flash it... Hole is too good it's too strong it just it does everything three mana three erases any skill of blocks the <sighs> only downside to it and we have another skill that kind of that kind of goes well with flash hole later but the only downside to flash hole is that it's an absorb doesn't so, eat swords exactly <clears throat> um, but it will deal with a ton of projectiles that are long range or even medium range that are early game like laser slide laser rapid fire mm -hmm. cannon anything on on lightning lightning highway that's going to do really well long range it can deal with that pretty easily and it's infinite use that's like the best part about it it even shuts down like when people run at you with the um a zero mana attack that costs one health, like Scream of Agony, is that what it's called? I forget S those skills' names. Scream of Evil? Scream of Evil. evil. Penetrates yeah. obstacles, deals two health, zero cost, one strength, yeah. Yep, stops stops people running at you from that and like zero cost decks, and uh, it stops so many things from happening. The other defense skill that kind of covers the the weakness of flash hole is fortress of iron a skill that's too good for what it is for what it does fortress yeah i a four seven erases swords this this isn't even like it it you don't really <laughs> yeah go, go ahead you don't even really take it for like you just it's just so solid you just throw it in there and you have the only things in the game that can beat it are psycho spear and other and it barely attack... beats it yeah other attacks with an attack boost but it's just so solid it's it's a relatively low cost shield that handles almost every sword in the game that's not impacted by any status effect. What was the only one? Muramasa Blade, I think, is yeah. the only one that penetrates that shield by just yeah, well, with raw skill. Yeah, Muramasa will penetrate anything. That, uh, yeah, yep, because it stops Excalibur. And, yeah, Excalibur is seven, right? Yeah, seven. Yep. I think that's it, right? That's the only... That is it. Well, I guess we're... we're ex we're not talking about so it destroy it destroys pretty much every sword in the game however it does it can break to very specific key attacks but That's still true. handles like 90 percent of key attacks <laughs> short range yeah key attack. the only one that i think could beat it is like psycho burst i think is what that one's called uh yeah psycho burst where it's the strength that is determined by your target's aura level. So if they're above seven, then it can beat it. However, Psycho Burst is a seven cost skill that's super easy to dodge. 
Yeah. So it like is. you won't even need to worry about it. But that's like the only key skill that I could think of, like short ranged skill that will deal with it consistently. But even then, all you have to do is just dodge Psycho Burst. The, one of the easier moves to dodge in the game. And it's a sh and Fortress of Iron is a shelter. Which is really nice. Honestly, stops so many things. Cause Fortress it, of Iron single-handedly... <laughs> I didn't realize this. It entirely shuts down the whole bravery school. Like, Railgun, Cluster Bomb, Excalibur loses to this defense skill. Yeah. And most of those <laughs> skills cost either one fewer or, like, right on the same amount that Fortress costs. Mm. There's almost... If you have... Uh, what is... If you have nature in your deck, you, you should be running Fortress of Iron, like one or two. Like you'll be set from any short range skill. Yeah. And then the last, the, the skill that you'll probably see the most in the game, Reincarnation. <laughs> When Phantom Dust was young, it wasn't defined by this skill, but now it is. <laughs> Every time you look at an attack skill, you have to be like, that's good. It's too bad it's not Reincarnation. <laughs> it's just... <sighs> you... So, the problem is, right, so many skills erase, but Reincarnation can't be erased. As long as you have the four mana. And, if you don't have a shield or an environment, um... Unless you're very practiced, and it's very hard, you can't really dodge it. And even people who can, it's very hard to dodge. Like, if someone has eight man and they throw two of these, pretty pretty rough. Um, it just... It doesn't... It's weird to say um, that, like, a skill in the game like Will-O-The-Wisp, which is considered extremely good and hard to dodge... Um, has trouble because it's in the same school with reincarnation and it's so strong and, and together like willow and reincarnation together having willow be so slow probably a little harder to dodge maybe than reincarnation because of how slow it is combined hmm. with reincarnation the homing on reincarnation's really good combining the slow moving projectile with willow and the fast-moving projectile with reincarnation is there's a combo like even if they do, even if they block one the other they're gonna hit by the other one and then you just drop another reincarnation on them the the thing that sets us apart from the rest of the attack skills is the fact that it cannot be erased as long as you have enough aura to use it now yeah. say against something like flash hole you throw it at flash hole if you have four aura and you throw it at flash hole, what happens is is you throw it, it takes you down to zero, and then as the projectile is flying, if you do not have uh, four aura to use, oh, I guess you need six. You need a total of six aura to prevent your reincarnation from being blocked. Because it, as long as you have the aura to use it, it also includes that when it's being erased. So flash hole mm. kind of counters it, but at the same time, as long as I got six aura, you're not stopping this. And it's not just like reincarnations, like the end all be all have this in your, in your deck. It's just a really good skill because it takes a lot to get rid of it. It's not like any other faith skill or anything like that, where you could just delete it by normal means. It, Deals a solid amount of damage, has really good homing, can't be erased by normal means. Yeah. And if, if you just think about it and compare it to every other skill we talked about up till up through the rest of the 10, it uh it's good against all of them. Pretty much. Yeah. Now we had trouble coming up with the list. Um, we went through all the skills that we could and we had a list of honorable mentions We had to take down that list of honorable mentions from like 
I'd say like 15, 20 mm -hmm. to, to five. Some of those being, I guess, since we're transitioning from a skill that can't be erased, photon barrier. Yeah. Very, very similar to reincarnation. As long as you got four aura, it only blocks uh, one, but... As long as that attack doesn't have pierce, it's a really good defense skill to have. Um, because it doesn't matter if it breaks. Because as long as you have the aura, you get it back. That's kind of how I think of it. It's like a safety net. It didn't quite crack the 10, but there's a lot of situations where taking it is just comfortable. It's nice to have. It doesn't disappear from Dragon Slayer. It, um absorbs pretty much anything yeah it's a barrier um, so it shouldn't it shouldn't lose to anything unless yeah. of course something goes over your head i think that's where the that skill kind of falls off to it's a barrier that kind of goes in front of you a little too far so sometimes depending on the distance to your opponent if like you throw a uh, parabola move like a bomb or a rock shot that barrier is not really high, so it'll probably go over it. But it's still a really good skill, nonetheless, to have because it's very, very similar to reincarnation. Yeah, it just had to compete with all the other defensive skills. Still since scary. we're since we're still on the reincarnation hype train, we put it, this next skill in here because we think. That it has a really good spot countering reincarnation, and that's Reflect Mirror. Yeah, that's that's actually almost the whole reason. Yeah. It's it's one. It's like it's essentially the same the same cost as a reincarnation, because in order to keep reincarnation, you have to have four. Reflect Mirror costs four. If you if you reflect reincarnation back at them, it definitely gives you the opportunity to push the offensive or try to make something happen or even just get out of there. Like, cause then they have to deal with reflect mirror and they may be forced to use a different skill. And that kind of mixes up that whole, well, I'm just going to use reincarnation until my brains fall out of my head. Yeah. Um, trying to think of other stuff. It, I mean, it, it's generally fairly solid as a shield. Uh, reflecting will stop a lot of things happening, um, rather than you being on the defensive, like people running at you with blaster, people throwing slide lasers at you. Yeah. Willow. The <laughs> I think the other kind of skill that has the same effect but not quite as good is reverse, and I think the reason that reflect, in my opinion, reflect mirror beats reverse is because. When you reverse a skill, you hold it in the air for like two seconds and then it throws it back at you. Reflect is instant. The moment it comes in contact with your skill, it's already heading back in the direction it came from. So if somebody throws like uh, like a lack or like Tiger Slayer or any race skill or something, some status effect at you, they may be have they, they, they may have enough time to react with reverse as opposed to Reflect Mirror, by the time they're recovering from throwing that skill, it's already halfway traveling back to them, and it could stop them. Yeah, that's that was my problem with Reverse, too. Five, five mana, it's so slow, loses to manual aiming. Uh, reflect Mirror is everything Reverse wishes it would. The other thing that Reflect Mirror can't do is deal with parabola it doesn't send it back in the direction it came at least that i'm aware of i don't i don't think that it does and if it doesn't or i'll probably just edit this part out but if it doesn't then it doesn't but i'm pretty sure it can't because it only should reflect straight on skills not anything that comes at like not anything that has a parabola effect, because it doesn't send it back the same direction. It doesn't do anything. It just blocks it, if I'm not mistaken. Because I don't okay. think I've ever seen Reflect Mirror reflect a bomb or rock shot. You know what I'm saying? 
Yeah. Like it'll, I've seen it reflect a slide laser and a laser. Those come from odd angles, but they're still coming at a sideways angle as opposed to like above the character. I don't know. Maybe because it's it, it's technically a barrier. Maybe that that's why. Be. Bombs do act kind of weird with skills like that. Or parabolas. Yeah. Um, so this next skill is definitely one that uh, is going to get you hated probably most in the room. Especially if uh, the rest of the group isn't prepared for it. And that's Vicious Balance. I almost forgot entirely <laughs> about Vicious Balance. <laughs> vicious Balance is kind of like Memory Lapse. Where, except Vicious Balance, you can't really do anything about unless you know that your opponent is just staying at two or the entire time and you're like oh, he hasn't he hasn't done anything for a while and he's still got two or and he's cycling through his skills uh we let's kill him because <laughs> uh you're gonna get hit with vicious balance and just, if you're not funneling through your deck uh you'll be okay but if you're like halfway through your deck and vicious balance hits you Good luck. Good luck for the rest of the game, because you're not coming can, back from that. It can even screw you at the start, because sometimes when, when people run it, you know, um, they'll re-roll their hand, get to two mana. But most of the time, people are trying to roll their hand high, so they'll, like, start... Some, sometimes you start with, like, five or six mana hands, and if you get vicious balanced out of that, yeah, you'll, you're stuck for a long time trying to dig through um, and to restore what you had. And they're probably not just running one. <laughs> so, no, yeah. So you're going to get hit with it in the beginning. You'll probably get hit with it at some point towards the middle. And then you'll likely get hit with it at the end if you haven't already been out. You, you know, if he hasn't already erased all your mana to begin with. One of the only theoretical counters. Um, and if erase skills were more prevalent, uh, we'd probably see them more, is orb. But you give up an entire slot to hold orb to not get erased and have your level reset. I believe orb works on it because orb negates uh, any erase skill that hits you. Yeah, I don't see why it wouldn't based on just the description of it. It says any erase skill, so yeah, we'll see. But it's the same thing where like, if someone starts with Vicious Balance, you wouldn't want to run three orbs in your deck. You'd run one. <laughs> Yes. And you're hoping to find your one orb before you get balanced. And exactly. you're, you're still going to get crippled. Yeah. Um, also, vicious balance decks are pretty fun, to be honest. You, yeah, you're, you you're, you're, you're definitely the villain of the room if you run a vicious balance deck. You will probably die shortly after using that move if people can get their hands on more aura after it's being used. Yeah. Uh... The next one, Flame Sword. A very easy 3-3. Three, three. I see it almost every game. It's, I, I think what edges it out over like Psycho Knife, as, like specifically Psycho Knife, because Psycho Blade's still good. It's still a five cost skill. Um, mm. But I think it's such a good mid-range sword. It outweighs Psycho Knife simply because of the uh, knockdown. Yes. And by the and time they get up, or, you know, they get knocked down, by the time they get up, you already have practically enough ore to use it again. That's that's why it edges out Blade for me. Um, Blade, Psycho Blade being five mana is so much harder to use a five mana sword you can whiff and then you're just stuck next to somebody flame sword is like little timmy's first phantom dust skill and <laughs> little timmy can carry that phantom dust skill forever because flame sword's actually incredible um yeah and it and with against psycho knife like psycho knife you need four aura to get the hard mm -hmm. knockdown albeit it does one more damage but you're expecting to land two Psycho Knives, which is very hard to do uh, against more experienced players. Yeah, my, I'd recommend Flame Sword. Just if you're getting into the game, like equip it and run around and swing at somebody. Learning how to play 
learning how to play around flame sword and play with it is like a building block it's it's good it's very good yeah it's definitely it's nature right or is it yes yeah if it if you got nature yeah you gotta have flame sword no reason not to it's too good the last one kind of had to fight for this one <laughs> but we right, had yeah. we had a of a, a quite a few tag team games where this really really helped now there is a very hard counter to it but that skill is frighten it doesn't work too well in a 1v1 or battle royale scenario like it can be okay in a you know free-for-all scenario but at that point then it feels like you're bullying one person you're like oh i just want them to die so i'm just going to keep frightening them from across the map while somebody's fighting them it could be a way of doing it but i think it really shines in tag team when you're cooperating with your teammate they got a cluster bomb and you're like okay i'm going to frighten them in three two one they chuck the cluster bomb you frighten they can't use a defense skill they're stunned then they take the six damage and it's global like you like you could be across the map and assist your teammate with dealing and opening up the opponent it's crazy i would definitely put it in the this team skill is kind of absurd <laughs> um ranking i don't know maybe someone more creative than me i can't think of another use for it outside of that other than annoying people in free for all it's yeah. funny yeah. You can stand across the map and ensure that someone else gets killed when their base gets rushed by spamming Frighten on them. Yeah. Um, but uh, I think in tag it is, it is, it's so good. You yeah. can't do anything about it. If you're a jumper, you can leap into the air and like get knocked down instead. But exactly, that's the only hard see... counter. You yeah. have to see the person actually do the animation and know that it's coming. And at that point, if you know, there's the mind game of, well, if I'm a jumper, I'm just going to jump the skill. And the person just doesn't do the skill, and then you're going to get hit while you're jumping. So, like, you're going to hit by the actual attack skill that does damage while you're jumping anyway. So, it's too good of a skill to, to I feel like, leave out of honorable mentions, even though it's... I We both feel it's very niche, but mm -hmm. the niche that it does hit, which is tag team, is just too good. And that's it for the video. If you guys made it this far, first off, thank you. And I'd like to know what some of your favorite skills are in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, you already know what to do, and I'll see you guys on the next one.